Today, Barbie Dream Camper is going to get a roll cage. I really like that this body can be in all one piece and be taken off. That's the first. Usually they come off in many pieces and don't just like sit over it. For the first time ever, I'm gonna be responsible um, because for the first time ever, we have beautiful shiny new shocks on a build. So I'm gonna tape them off with masking tape so that I uh, don't get grinder sparks and welder berries on the uh, nice clean tubes here because that would really ruin the life of a shock. got my uh, excessively overkill fancy shock mount. They have a hole in the middle large enough to fit uh, a 14 mil socket in there so that you know you can actually unbolt your bolt and then of course they'll go through the top eye of the shock and then I can weld tubes to anywhere around this. Time to start tearing apart this front end. experiment here where I'm actually trying to do things right the first time. I'm about to weld a tube onto here and so I'm gonna actually sand off all of the paint before I weld the tube on. So I've got a used up belt from the belt grinder here that I'm making a little thinner so it'll fit into the spot. And then we uh... We got uh, new shock mounts that are, you know, half done, but still plenty strong as tested by, whoops, now putting it on its own weight again and crunching the body. There we go. Look at that. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a ton more reinforcement going into them, but they hold up the weight of the machine again. So... I call that a win. Wow, look at that thing. Also, this is really satisfying that, look at this, the, the original body here had these holes, which were, I mean, they're not literally a shock tower on the power wheels because it doesn't have shocks, but they're like the power wheels equivalent because they're where like the steering, uh, you know, bolts that hold the steering whatever on. So it looks like these are just holes cut out specifically for these shock towers. So that's pleasing. My favorite tool for cutting power wheels. plastic cut out of here. There's some serious leg room. This thing's gonna be the comfy comfy. Bend in the first tube for the roll cage. Yeah. Give her a couple more degrees of bend so it can sit down a little farther. Like 
grip hydraulic is great on this thing. It makes it so nice. Where do I put it? The body's so jiggly. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to try to get it straight and then match the other side. I got my first piece of roll cage here bent and it looks super nice. And then I went to bend the second one. I just have all the numbers written down, which makes it easier, except when you forget a step. And the important step was put in the larger radius die for the second bend. Uh, realistically, I could have done this bend with the large radius die, but I didn't on the first one. Uh, so that one's a yeet. Take two. Got the second one in. Uh, after I screwed it up once, it turned out great. <laughs> now I'm just tacking in this piece here for strength of the roll cage, and it'll be a great place to mount a sweet light bar. And what's gonna be really cool is that when it's done, when you take the body off, it's still gonna look like a Barbie camper. Got the uh, dash cut out around these A-pillar roll bar pieces. Uh, so now it's time to move back to the B-pillar. The reason I'm sitting in here is to see what kind of clearance I have, but I think I'm gonna run it from here, you know, bend to follow this body line, run the tube down through there, and then probably run it all the way down to the bottom part of the chassis here. Also, I'm thinking we're gonna need a quick release steering wheel, but it is already much easier to get in and out of here. It may not look like it. It's much easier to get in and out with a little bit of roll cage to hold on to. So I'm working on bending one of my B pillars here and uh, there's not quite enough length as you can see, I'm about to run out of roller here that's gonna run off of it. So, trick, take a piece of half inch pipe that's like actual water pipe, um, which fits very nicely inside of one inch mechanical tubing. Put a little piece of this over there, and then you can bend farther. Until you run into your ceiling. I did this one yesterday, this bar, and then this morning I did this hoop back here with a little arch in it to follow the, you know, lines of the plastic body and realized that I should have done that up front. So here we are, new bar for up here. Sometimes you gotta cut stuff out and do it over again because you're stupid. here and I was originally planning on redoing these shock mounts back here as well you know they actually work just fine the way they are and the rear has more travel than the front already and this one inch tubing just happens to fit inside of this thin wall inch and an eighth tubing that is the chassis there so I can just tap that down in there uh, and it's a great way to you know just go off from there <laughs> First 
try. Check. Getting the other one bent to match. Not check. To get these at the actually appropriate angle, um, what I did is I pulled the other one out, wasn't welded yet for this exact reason. Uh, set them both here nice and flat on the bench. And then this one I cut and t welded a sleeve in there. And now this piece I can just rotate until I get the same angle relative to the bench, but in the opposite direction. extra sleeve and rearrange got that all symmetrical and shiny looking then I'm gonna do a hoop over the top here and then an X across the back these rear angle brace bars whatever you want to call them uh, I got this one in uh, in a straight line and decided it looked like trash because you could it just didn't fit with the other angles so I put a bend in it here uh, and that fixed everything which also means I'm pretty sure that in this whole roll cage there's like basically no pieces that are not bent these ones are going to have a little bit of bend in them just at the top so that they can come from this plane out to the other one and match it all the way through maybe let me see no nope, actually it might just work that they're straight that is pretty well in plane eh, we'll see finishing touch on the Barbie camper, I'm getting horns. One of these is a scrap that I've had laying around for like literally years now. Um, it was a 180 degree bend that I bent for something and never used. Uh, so I cut this chunk out of it for here. Uh, hang on, maybe it goes this way. No, it goes this way. Uh, yeah, so that goes right there uh, for three reasons. Aesthetics, 
uh, grab handle for climbing in and strength that doesn't really matter all that much, but it'll strengthen up this bend here. Uh, and mostly, you know, it's a grab handle when you're climbing in and out, which will actually be really handy. And then of course, it just looks really cool. Time to test out these grab handles. The more, uh, I mean, they're handy, but it's cramped in here. The more steel I get in here, the less room you have, because now there's no space there. But uh, once you get in, super roomy. We are fresh out of steel, so that's all we got this week. As you've probably noticed, this banshee's been being put together in the background of this video, and it is looking mighty fresh. Believe it or not, it's the same terrible banshee we got for 500 bucks a few months ago. And now it's been beautifully restored and is all shiny and ready to shred. And we're gonna give it away. If you wanna be the first to know, sign up for our mailing list because last time we dropped some merch, we sold out in like two days. So uh, yeah, you'll wanna be in the know when that happens. So you can get some sweet merch and maybe win a really sexy Banshee. <laughs> also, uh, very soon we're going to be doing a full Banshee restoration time-lapse video. Uh, Will's been working hard on restoring that thing and putting it back together, so uh, be on the lookout for that video as well. Mm -hmm.